lovely to see everybody here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, um, the project is, um, as Claire said, called Breaking the Fourth Wall of Climate Migration, and it's about developing an accountable climate justice curriculum for Scottish schools. And um, you'll see our partners at the bottom um, there, um, which is SOMACT, which is a Somaliland um, young journalist uh, collective, uh, us, the Third Generation Project. Um, we receive funding from National Geographic graphic to do that to do the project and um, as well um, ASU is the Aniwa survival organization and so they um, worked with us in um, in in Kenya um, and we've we've had a long-term collaboration um, with them they're they're based um, based here but work um, in in Ethiopia um, and that will um, it'll become more apparent what's what's happening sort of geographically hopefully um, in a in a little bit okay um, yeah and it's uh, me and Annabelle so there's just a, a little look um, at the um, at the project team and and where we come from and um, Bennett Collins who would have loved to have been here um, tonight he he thought up the original project and he um, works with us um, in St Andrews he's originally from the US myself and um, Nikki Ochala, Ojuni Ochala, uh, Yahya Mohammed, Sam Wilson, Alice Rosam, and Tina Jeffcott, who's a, a media consultant as well. And it was Alice Rosam as well that um, that was mentioned. She she's the um, Breadline Kids documentarian who actually got nominated for a BAFTA for that. So we're very 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 proud of her. Um, okay, so first of all, what is the Third Generation Project? Um, we're a think tank um, based at the University of St. Andrews were the university's first um, think tank and we were founded in 2016 by Bennett and myself and basically we'd been working together for a few years um, doing work with communities in North America and East Africa collaborative um, work and it really came out of, of that and what we do we see um, climate justice education really as as a real key thing in terms of transformative change um, you know in a whole host of, of, of ways and the way that we work and the methodology that we've developed over the years is to work um, according and, and in collaboration with grassroots movements um, and the organisation partners um, that, that we have. So, you know, the, the, the partners that we have are just very much, um, you know, really um, you know, designing a lot of the the work that we're doing and we're working um, in collaboration so that we make sure that everything we do is is as um, accountable really as um, as possible um, yeah and what is breaking the fourth wall of um, climate migration uh, the planning began in April 2018 and really we wanted to do a number of things in the project. First, um, educate students, pupils about narratives, the power of imagery, um, about stories and, and um, really how to make stories accountable, um, as well to think of it um, for students to think of themselves as storytellers. Um, and, you know, at the same time as well, then to have stories that are so very seldom um, discussed um, in you know communities that are already dealing with the impact of climate change to have them tell their own stories um, as well and really in all of this as well to raise awareness about the situation um, in the Horn of Africa and how climate change is already affecting um, those communities um, across that across that region. This is me uh, just also to clarify my involvement with the project so I do the communications for TGP generally, but I was brought on to kind of help with the social media needs in the beginning of January when we went to the field. And, um, and since then, I've also helped Ali present the, pro the project to the schools when we went to introduce the project in the first place. Um, so yeah, the field work, which happened in early 2019, so just over a year and a half ago, we spent two weeks in Somaliland in, um, in an internally displaced people's camp and also around Hagesa, which is the capital of Somaliland. And we also spent two weeks in a refugee camp in Kenya with predominantly Ethiopian refugees and also kind of in uh, Lake Turkana and Kalobei areas. We conducted, alongside the materials we collected, which I'll talk about in a second, we also conducted a series of workshops while we were there together with our local partners, which Ali have mentioned, SOMACT and ASO. And the, um, the workshops focused 
quite in a, along much of a similar theme as the workshops in Scotland uh, on digital storytelling, on filmmaking, um, and then perhaps a bit differently also on CV, CV building and grant writing because those that kind of adapted to the needs of, of who we were working with. And out of this field work, actually two further initiatives have uh, kind of sprung. One of them is As We Progress, which is a, a media collective of young journalists in Somaliland who have used the equipment and the skills. Because we left also all of our equipment, which we took to these places, we left there as well. So this, the, we're using the equipment and the skills we taught them. They've formed a, a yeah, media collective um, to, to tell their story more effectively. And then a Muslim Maya initiative, which is a partnership with Some Act and Transparency Solutions, uh, Somaliland local organizations to document the humanitarian aid response in the entire displaced people's camps in Somaliland regarding particularly the COVID situation. So those are kind of some of our, so some of the things that have emerged from the field work and our ongoing collaborations with our partners. Yep, those are some pictures of our media workshops. <laughs> um, these, are some of, these are just a few examples of our materials, but we'll see more later. Um, but if we just go to the next slide as well, then I can, yeah. So, so the materials we collected, we collected a, a huge wealth of materials. So over 30 interviews and, which, um, and also 200 pages of transcribed interviews, uh, 50 hours, more than 50 hours of B-roll and over 500 high quality photos. So a huge store of materials to be used in um, the, in the, in the Scottish school workshops. So handing over to Ali back now again. Thank you. So, so after um, <clears throat> the materials, after we got the materials, the, the question then was to, um, to go into schools, how we would go into schools. And you can just see that some of the um, preparations um, in the schools, that's all the transcripts, the, the, the photo on the, the left is all the, the transcripts. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so basically, um, the first thing we did, we had a curriculum development day with Ochen Harvey Academy in March of 2019, because it was really important for us to, to know how this could potentially fit even in a, in a curriculum. You know, it was a long time um, since I've been at school. Um, there, you know, a lot of people who hadn't in the team that, you know, of course, hadn't been through the, um, the, the UK educational system. So we really, or Scottish educational system. So we really needed to think how that would work so we had this curriculum development day um, and you know a lot of discussions then about um, both the quality of the materials and what we could um, what we could potentially do with them and so in um, June of 2019 we then met with teachers at each of the um, three schools and had a really um, positive set of, of interactions um, and as a result of that we were then invited into um, the schools and it was Annabelle and I who did um, presentations to fifth and sixth year um, student assemblies which seems like an awful long time ago. Um, now when we were when we were just starting out and really the idea at that point was that that we knew we were in quite a short time frame and so really um it, we asked for volunteers basically um you know it wasn't at that point a thought of like building it into an existing curriculum it was you know like let's let's ask for volunteers see who would like to do this and we'll do this as a as an extra um and so those workshops took place in november and december of 2019 We'll, we'll go to another slide in a minute but basically it was six weeks of workshops where Bennett and I went into um, to schools. The idea of the timeline was due to be that um, we would work as well with schools after um, after the, um, the Christmas and New Year period and then um, that there would be an exhibition that would be held in sort of April May time but of course um, by then um, you know events had events had overtaken us um, but then the idea as well that we would have some sort of evaluation at the end as well. Yep, so there you can just see, I mean, basically what we did, um, yeah, Ben and I went into schools, but also we, in that, in that first picture, um, that's um, Nikeo Achala, who's one of the, the project team um, who came into the school at schools with us in the first week. Um, and the second week it is um, Yahya Mohammed being Skyped in. Um, at that point, that was to um, Madras from um, Somaliland. Somal Somaliland has 5G, so they're just amazing. 
um, amazing connection um, to us. And then just some of the workshop um, pictures there. So yeah, really the schedule outline, um, it was six weeks, as I said, the first was learning about the Anuak of Gambela, um, and Gambela is in Ethiopia, and it's where the Ethiopian refugees um, who are in the Kenyan refugee camp have, um, have basically fled um, from. So learning about the Anuak of Gambela, learning about Somaliland in week two, um, and that's when you saw the, the Skype that, that Yahya came in, then looking at the power of narrative construction and digital storytelling, um, how to tell stories digitally, ethical digital storytelling and beginning to create our digital stories. And I should say, I think it was in weeks, in weeks four and six. Week four, we had Sam Wilson, who, um, who has worked for the New York Times. He came in and did that workshop. Um, and then in um, week six it was Alice um, that came in and uh, came in and workshopped um, the ideas and it was interesting because you know the the, the students um, the, sorry the the students could um, the pupils could choose which um, you know which case study they went with I should have said at the beginning Somaliland is a very clear case of um, of climate climate induced migration and displacement um, whereas what you have in the case of um, the the Anuak in uh, in Kenya is very much climate change as a threat multiplier to an existing um, political situation so um, so those were our um, six weeks so I'm giving you a bit of a whistle stop tour the thing we wanted to show you as well is or and that we wanted to show students and pupils was um how um you you, you just have different you do you have just different perspectives as well um and just different different ways to um film make so at the end of the um project which was unfortunately interrupted by COVID we sent out questionnaires to the students and that kind of helped us um, in our evaluation of the project. So the kind of conclusions which I'm going to, like some of the conclusions we're going to present are a combination of our, our feelings about how the project went and then also very heavily informed by the surveys which we did. The, what, was, what came out very strongly out of the surveys was that the students really appreciated the access to the experts which, are, which our uh, curriculum provided. So being taught directly by journalists and documentarians um, who are, yeah, very leading in their field also having the, ex the access to uh, Yahya and Nika that are local partner organizations, either in person or through Zoom, was, was very appreciated and very impactful. The support from our, that we received from the teachers in all three of the schools was invaluable and very, um, very encouraging in terms of also just uh, having the sense that this was a, a worthwhile project, which we obviously believed, but we needed to know that others believed as well. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we conveyed a lot of information in these workshops, perhaps a little bit, we tried to convey a little bit too much, but they were, they were perceived as very informative by the students and particularly all these raw materials, one of which we've been able to show, share with you today, were also quite impactful because, um, yeah, which, which, was, which was good to hear. And what was particularly encouraging as well was that the students, according to the survey, felt quite empowered to take action after this workshop series. So, so whether that action be attending a climate march, being more critical of the media, the digital media which they're consuming, or um, speaking more about it with friends and family, or kind of pursuing this interest more actively in other ways, to see, to see that they felt empowered to take action rather than just are kind of anxious and concerned about the state of the world, as many feel, was, was really encouraging as well. Um, and finally, another another pro, uh, another positive thing is that this this curriculum is quite adaptable to kind of a COVID educational learning set, set setting. With everything moving online, um, I think there'll, there'll there'll be lots of opportunities to develop the project in a way that enables it to roll to be rolled out more effectively to further schools. Um, and yeah, as we, as we kind of get used to doing all this online communication, we're also Skyping in experts and uh, local activists from across the world will be a much more kind of normal and, and feasible thing. So that's, that's a positive as well. We have to find that silver lining in COVID somewhere. <laughs> um, and, and rolling it out online also um, might provide us more ability to make it accountable because so going over to the kind of second 
difficult square on the right hand side, things we could uh, that could be worked on or improved. The scalability of the of this program is kind of um, something we're trying to figure out. We're experimenting different ways of of repackaging the what we've what we've put together in ways that can be rolled out, which are not quite as resource intensive for us and just repl replicable outside of our organization basically right but at the same time we want to maintain its the accountability to the local partners because that's very important to us so kind of balancing that um is a bit of a, a tricky act but in fact uh with things moving increasingly online that might provide us with new opportunities to do that um another thing which i think was came out of the surveys and also out of our own personal reflections was that we were perhaps a little we were a bit over ambitious with the outputs that we expected so the students went the intention was that the students create a video at the end of their um at the end of the workshop series which that part was unfortunately heavily interrupted by the lockdown um in march um but also we provided perhaps just too much raw material and the video editing was very technical and with the time in the time frame that we had had been had had available to us that was perhaps just a little bit of an over ambitious goal generally perhaps also we tried to convey just too much information in these sessions we each each one was quite individual uh, had a, just just a ton of information packed into it and we perhaps could have articulated our overall obje learning objectives at the start of the um, at the of the workshop more effectively and kind of connected each of the workshops that's kind of what we felt coming out of the uh, the project and then obviously the fact that it ended due to, uh, early due to COVID is a is it was it was a real disappointment but um we're, we're, we're grateful that we were able to complete the workshop series at least in terms of the education that we were able to give even the students unfortunately weren't able to finish their video projects in return yeah so here's some of the kind of statistics surrounding the the feedback forms so do you think there's a need for more climate justice and digital storytelling education programs very heavily yes with just one that's like there's only a slight kind of need more so it, clearly that's a very strong uh, agreement with the intentions of our of our curriculum our program which was which was great uh how likely are you to recommend this workshop series to a friend again m like mostly very very likely and then some moderately likely so a more of a range of opinion there but still overwhelmingly positive and yeah, here are just some of the experts and uh, excerpts of, of feedback forms in terms of what made it particularly powerful. But as I, as I kind of summarized already, the, the um, hearing directly from people who are impacted, the kind of, yeah, the access that we provide to experts, the, that really came out of the, of the forms is particularly um, important. And, and yeah, people felt, well, from the forms also it came out very strongly that they learned a lot about digital storytelling but also about the human impact of climate change and the way that the media manipulated narratives around uh, climate migrants and and yeah and things like that. So really, a lot of our educational goals seem to have been achieved according to the feedbacks uh, surveys that were provided. And yeah, I think that kind of concludes our presentation. Okay, well, I think we'll move over now, if that's okay, just to um, to Mrs. Poor and to the pupils from Bell Baxter. So we've got Sophie Charlotte. We've got David and Ryan here as well, and um, so over to you. Um, I am the guidance teacher at um, Bell Baxter High School, and I have full school responsibility for the promotion of global citizenship. I um, joined this evening with um, David Beckett, curriculum lead for expressive arts, and three of our wonderful um, young adults, um, Sophie, Charlotte, and Rowan. Um, I am in a very fortunate position to have worked here for several years and have known these wonderful young people for the past six years. Um, over the past six years, they, they have taken responsibility for um, not only raising awareness of um, eco amnesty fair trade, but also of the sustainable development goals and how the young people in Bell Baxter um, are so passionate about taking responsibility for their actions, not only in a um, local school, but um, national and global um, agenda, so that we can, um, you know, passionate about social justice and I suppose sharing that every individual action 
is connected to other people and then for every action there is a reaction and we are seeing that um, across um, the world with the um, climate emergency that we have seen. Yeah, we've, we've basically, we've just put together some points about, we've not got a presentation or anything, but we've just put together some points about what we found that we gained from the mm -hmm. project. Um, so one of the one of the main things was getting to talk to and sort of making links with a variety of people in the field yeah, and all the professionals and everyone that yeah was really interesting. and especially because we were able to utilize skype to link with people around the world and we didn't have to and we were lucky enough to have so many amazing experts come in and talk to us and it's really good to make make those links yeah so we also learned a lot about um different cultures obviously and from the people that came in and spoke to us about what was going on in, in their countries and like how it affected everyone and basically it was just learning a lot of things about how different countries are like coping with the climate crisis and it was really interesting to see like a different point of view because obviously there's a completely different way of dealing with it in the UK and it's just for, it was really interesting to see what was like elsewhere. So yeah, that was mm -hmm. a that was a good bit. And sort of like linked to that is kind of um, a lot of it was linked to, to learning our privilege as as mm -hmm. sort of middle class white people in Scotland. Mm -hmm. We have access to so many things and so many resources, and um, we were able to sort of like recognise that privilege and kind of use it to the best of our ability to to do what we can and to sort of. Um, yeah to kind of keep that in mind and uh, it was a lot about kind of you know the like the things about ethical accountable storytelling um making sure that we are aware of how we how we view the people that we're sort of looking at and we're learning about and how we present them in an ethical and accountable way that's not just sort of like from one perspective as like a victim or you know sort mm -hmm. of like a comic relief video of yeah, Ed Sheeran yeah. going like so really learning about the lifestyle and everything around that mm -hmm. and how to present that in an in an ethical and and yeah and, a just and it, was, way. it was really good as well because that was one one of the sessions kind of like the main focus was to look at how to um, obviously present other people's like stories and like trying to understand having a little bit of like what's the word empathy yeah empathy towards like um, other people's backgrounds and things and it was like very interesting seeing the different like mediums to use in order to create the right um, like view for other people to see the actual story and not what someone else is trying to get across which they haven't even been through the same situation so that was yeah and, and the thing with the mediums as well is that we had obviously we were we were cut short in, in times in terms of what we could make mm -hmm. because it's sort of we we were cut off kind of as we were starting to make the project but we had freedom a lot of freedom over our own learning and the way that we the way that these we sort of um interpreted chose it to, yeah chose so to like across. we you know we had the option of making a film but there was also the options of a social media project and we could we had a lot of free, mm -hmm. freedom over our um over the film and kind of we could see what stories really spoke to us and and how we could show those in a mm -hmm. in a really good light um yeah, I think in general the intersectionality of our study in terms of learning about all of the impacts of the climate crisis because we sort of, in geography, we learn about climate change in terms of, you know, the, the geographical side and, and how it works and the science, um, but we rarely get to see the human impact mm -hmm. and like how yeah, people... The social side as well, yeah. How people are truly being impacted and, and the media also which was a huge part of what we were learning about and you know I definitely haven't looked at the media the same way and I'm uh, we're all sort of a lot more critical of it um, but like the media also rep like showing the climate crisis to be something that we can fix but will happen in the future but sort of learning that it's not a future problem and it's happening now and people are being affected mm -hmm. sort of as we speak um, we we felt overwhelmingly we felt listened to in yeah. in the whole process and we never felt patronized by the yeah. people that we were working with which is a big thing in 
in school I yeah. we find like it's hard it's a lot of people who come in that I've never worked with with yeah. high school students um, immediately sort of like treat you like children but we didn't experience that at all. And it was, it was also like the, the people who were organizing it were obviously steering us in the right direction but also making sure that like what we were saying was being like the core bit of like what was the project was going to come out like so that was really good as well and it was also mm -hmm. very good to have um the like the footage like straight away that wasn't that wasn't edited or anything and we could kind of do what we liked with it but also obviously since we we got taught how to use it um to portray like the right image of like the people and the story they were going they, they had experienced so like we were able to do tell us in the right way kind yeah, of if that yeah. makes sense and it was it was really good to work collaboratively um which is a sort of um which is uh, like a thing in schools, like a lot of the time there's a teacher student divide in terms of the teacher teaches you something and you go off and, and you do it, it and in. you go off and study it. But we really worked collaboratively with um, yeah. Bennett and Ali and the other and people who came equal, in yeah. and we were, we were able to talk about our opinions and how that, and you know, our thoughts. And it was a very open and safe space, Inviolent, I think. Yeah. Also, what I'd say is that they were the 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 uni and the people and everyone was very understanding of our our commitments because as high school students, especially in the senior phase, doing exams and things, we don't have much control or freedom of our time. So we really had to work around our time and like we did we did our sessions in lunchtime and like during PE mm -hmm. and. Um, Bennett and Ali and the people from third generation were really understanding yeah. understanding and able to sort of mold to our time constraints and the mm -hmm. and um, you know people were during the time we were doing it people were in and out because of prelim preliminary exams and like schoolwork um, and everyone was overall overwhelmingly very understanding of that the enthusiasm especially of our instructors about the the issue and sort of what they were teaching us, their enthusiasm really made us enthusiastic. We found, yeah. and we were always quite kind of inspiring like, as well. Yeah, we were always sort of talking about it in between the um, sessions, and mm -hmm. like you know, we were we would go off and think about it more and and come to our own kind of conclusions, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if Rowan has any yeah, questions sorry. to make as well. Rowan's because, not with us because or anything she wants to add on. Rowan, if you've got anything you want to say. <laughs> Um, I just want to say, yeah, it was such an um, amazing experience to um, be able to work closely with uh, the team from St. Augustine and also from, as you said, from Skype and the people that came in and worked with us. It was really great to have those connections. Mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, reinforcing everything you said, that was spot on. Just generally, it was a really pleasant experience. It yeah. was really enjoyable as well. Yeah, so and we were so yeah, yeah, we were. Like, <laughs> we want really, to do more now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our main complaint was just more. Why did it? And end? I think I think it's so important for for everyone in Scotland to learn this because we are obviously we're in the global goals group and we're kind of like we're interested and passionate about this. But I think it's so important for other people because yeah, I think spread that it's so easy yeah. to have a very clouded view mm -hmm. in black in, and white opinions and things like that in yeah. like in us so we're like focusing on us and on our exams and our drama and friend groups but like mm -hmm. and in in the general school curriculum there's not a lot mm -hmm. that kind of opens that out yeah. it's kind of you just learn about pff, analyzing and it's also like understanding maths. what's going on in like the real world world and yeah. like well, it's kind of, it's good as well because it, it helped to incorporate a lot of things that we do learn in like geography or biology or the mm -hmm. curriculum mm -hmm. and like kind of, yeah, draw some draw some connections there and yeah. like it made it a lot easier to understand um, things in that realm and also like social issues and things like yeah, that. So I, I definitely feel since since doing the project, I've got, uh, I've got a lot more sort of like insight into what's going on. Yeah. I feel I feel more kind of... Uh, insightful is the only one I can think of but like insightful about how I view things and critical and it's definitely even though we didn't get around to being able to create the things it's it you know got such a good it's had such an um, impact on me in terms of my how I view things I'm sure they, that, that everyone else would say yeah the same. it was also like when we were doing like 
um, when we were obviously like speaking to everyone about different ideas, it was really, it helped to build confidence in me anyway, and I'm probably, probably the same yeah. with everyone else, but like it was just really good to like see your ideas um, off the bat and like get out and make sure people understood kind of where you're coming from and it's also like um, varying people's opinions and like changing it, giving people a bit of a... Yeah, there was a very, it was a, not a judgmental, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. It also helped prepare us for more, because we're in the senior phase going off to university, it helps prepare us for that. Yeah. Um, if, unless Rowan has anything else to say, we need to, um, I think we should pass on to Mr. Beckett. Who can talk about sort of how it links into our curriculum in terms of the media perspective? Okay, and just before you disappear on us, because I know that you're going to be locked out of the building at seven o'clock, can we just say a huge thanks to you both? And um, it's been really good to hear from you, Sophie and Charlotte. We're keeping Rowan, we're keeping Mr. Beckett just yeah, now, yeah. And, and we're losing Mrs. Moore <laughs> as well. But thank you. And thank you all for giving us such an insight and into your commitment and enthusiasm for this. It's just great to hear, and you're right, this is for everybody. So, give the next generation take on the battle. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, just just sitting swollen with pride for a couple of minutes there, because um, because I'm I'm never never cease to be amazed by what my students come out with. Um, really, from a curricular point of view, um, this project has probably been the single most real world project that the school's been involved with all year. There's loads and loads of talk about making the curriculum relevant to real world issues. Um, and this didn't have to shoehorn it in, it just was. And that overwhelmingly came back from the students. Every one of them was changed by taking part in the process and all for different reasons. Some of it because of the the subject matter and the way it was delivered. I mean, the team were fantastic working with everybody. Um, other times it was individual personalities coming into the building. I mean, when, when Alice happened to be in the building the same week as um, the uh, Channel 4 Dispatches documentary that she'd made broke, um, and we were teaching that documentary in media studies and the director was in the next classroom. That's a buzz around the school. And also gave our students a... Uh, a fascinating insight into, you know, there's, there's, there's a 27 year old woman making documentaries that the world is celebrating and our media students going, this is a real thing, it's tangible. And I think um, so often, uh, and I think Sophie really hit it on the head, so often the, the curriculum's so abstract, uh, abstract and examination focused that it doesn't make genuine links with the real world or the real world of work. And this project managed to do those things very, very successfully. Uh, Going forward, and, and I know that's something that Ali spoke to me uh, this, this morning briefly by, by email about, going forward, I think you've really got to make this so much bigger. I think there's room for this. I think it should be an entitlement within curriculum for excellence. Um, climate education's there. Um, education for sustainability is there. Pro a project like this, I think, should be absolutely at the heart of it. And, and I, for one, would, would advocate, and I'm quite sure we get support within Bell Baxter, that this became uh, a core item that every student in uh, four, five, and six got access to because um, just hearing my students speak and having seen some of the work that other students have, have uh, brought forward from this, uh, I think it would be uh, it would be a crime to have taken this so far and then to allow the interruption of COVID to stop us progressing and finishing what we've already started. But more importantly. You know, the, the, the small numbers of students we've touched so far, it would be really, really exciting to then take this forward as part of the core education programme. I, yes, learning for sustainability is an entitlement, and I think a meaningful project that actually um, has impact like this is, is how we want to see that implemented in the curriculum, um, rather than things that um, do sound good but actually don't have any real impact. Thank you very much. We are enormously proud of your pupils as well. And um, it's just great to hear from you all this evening. I'd like to say a huge thank you. It's seven o'clock, just after seven o'clock, and we've done really well. To Professor Ali Watson, to Annabelle von Moltke, to Mrs. Karen Poor, Mr. David Beckett, Sophie Charlotte and Rowan for an absolutely fabulous 
input this evening. We really, really appreciate it. And it's just great to have this message with the wider world because this is something that we like to see in all schools across the UK. So thank you all very much. Thank you also to Mike Clark from the One World Centre for dealing with the technology side of things. Mike's a wizard. Um, so yes, thank you for making things happen. Um, but yeah. if anybody has any questions, please to stay on and ask them. But other than that, I would just like to say thank you all very much for being here. It's been great to see you. Could I just say a little thank you to both for everybody um, who, who listened and stayed on um, tonight and, and of course for, for our partners in Bell Baxter because, you know, for, for, um, for all the positives that, that they said, it was, it was such an, a positive experience to, to go into those classrooms every week. Thank you so much. Thank you.